everyone, Christian here, and we're gonna go take a look at some palms planted in the median here on this road. Now, as you can see, I'm risking my life here, but this is <clears throat> Pseudo Phoenix Sargentii Variation Fat Boy. You can see this one's actually taken a little bit of a beating uh, from the Pseudo Phoenix viral decline that uh, took place in the past 10 years. And it, uh, this, this might be a little bit difficult, but I'm still gonna do it. You can see this actually does flower. And uh, the palm itself, you know, this one is doing really well. You can see just how fat it is. I'm gonna go to one that is, that is not covered in uh, jasmine, I believe this is. And we can go take a look. So I'm, you can see this is somewhat of a main road. It's four lanes, but trying not to attract any attention here. Um, I thought that was going to be a little bit more exposed there. So uh, there were actually four palms. And I'll get back to why this one died. There was a palm right in here. I don't know if the trunk... It was actually laying in... It was, it was laying over. And I was going to explain why it was laid over, but I'll still do that. I just can't. don't have the physical evidence for it. So this one's a little bit stunted. I don't want to really go on that right now. But let's go to this guy right here because you can see that this is not just any uh, normal Sargentii. It is quite a fat boy, hence its name. So the origin of this uh, variation of Pseudophoenix Sargentii, the otherwise common uh, Sargent's Cherry Palm, native to the Keys and to parts of the Northern Caribbean, um, is the palm was found growing in a garden. Here, I'll show you guys the crown. See, it has a much more symmetrical crown. It doesn't droop as much as regular Sargentii. It's just very fat, uh, you know, just stocky palm versus normal Sargentii, which can actually look a little bit on the uglier side, especially when it gets larger. So this one looks pretty awesome, especially when it gets more trunk and just a you know, full crown, which this one does have. So, uh, so anyways, the origin of Fat Boy comes from a palm that was growing on Sanibel Island um, probably 20 to 25 years ago. And this palm, uh, it was known by collectors and a few collectors in this area actually uh, collected seed, planted it in their yard. And one, one of them had one that w would actually produce fruit. And they dispersed it throughout uh, the the area throughout Florida. I mean, whoever you know asked or whoever they traded with, they would um, they would give seed. And so uh, the the fat boy was born in the collector world, so to speak. It's relatively unknown even in the collector world. It's kind of just a variation, but it's such a nice variation that I think it deserves its own video. So um, why it, why it gets so fat is kind of unknown. It, it might be because out in Sanibel, the conditions in which it were, was growing, it, it, were, it was growing, yeah, sorry. The, the, the thought of cars hitting me head on at 45, 50 miles an hour is a little bit unnerving. So, um, basically, the, the idea that it keeps a lot of its water in, uh, in the trunk, it has a ventricose trunk you can see right there, it fattens up in the middle and as a result it, it might hold more water. Sanibel is, is a little bit drier climate than even right here, only about 15 miles as the crow flies away. Um, just because right by the water you get those offshore breezes that keep the, the clouds away in the summer. So maybe 15 inches less rain a year. So uh, anyway, what happened to the, the person who collected these, these seeds out on Sanibel actually brought them and uh, in the city, they decided to go ahead and uh, donate them to the city for planting. There's actually a whole row of these all along this road. And um, they kind of come and go. There, there isn't any in the next median over. But uh, during the early 2010s, or late 2000s, early 2010s, there was a Pseudophoenix viral decline. There's, there, there is a scientific name for it, uh, but I'm not going to go into that. Because <clears throat> one, I forget what it's called. And two, it really doesn't... This, this is more of a hobbyist collector's channel, not a scientific uh, thing that's more for the botanist, and I'm not a botanist. So when that decline started happening, I started seeing it around uh, early 2009. I would say 60% of Pseudophoenix Sargentii that I saw in collector gardens died or, or took severe damage, uh, as in like their crown. What will happen is that crown would turn black, essentially, and it would ooze, and something was attacking it. It was some, some sort of viral 
infection that it had and it was kind of unknown now they know what it is and the, the best way to actually counteract it is to pour to take salt water or sea water people were actually pouring sea water into the crown they actually figured that out i believe at montgomery botanical gardens and they uh it just started to reverse itself. It was like the seawater acted as some sort of uh, cauterization or antibiotic to the, uh, to the issue. Not that it wasn't a bacteria, but you know what I mean. Some sort of uh, uh, vaccine, if you will. So, you know, it does have a nice silvery color. Some of these can be very green, Sargenti eyes. And like I said, some of them can look very droopy and kind of asymmetrical and a little bit on the uglier side. But this has a real fat crown to it. I mean, if we get up real close and personal, you can see these petioles, although they don't have any spines, if you were to run your hand real hard on here, like you're definitely going to get, you know, sliced up a little bit and, and like that real thin paper slice cut. You don't want that. And it has also been fruiting. You can see if this is going to come off. That's actually still stuck on there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a really cool, this is actually, uh, probably grows twice to three times as fast as a normal Sargentii. I would be surprised if these were these are more than 10 years old where a normal sargentii these would definitely be 10 years old probably closer to 12 to 15 so uh you can see the, the growth difference and i don't believe there's any irrigation here but these don't really require it um you can just see how the trunk does flare out it it is in uh good shape it is somehow getting taken care of it i'm not sure if there there are hidden sprinklers here but when the trunk flares out like that that means that it is getting water at the base and in, I mean, most likely, and uh, you know, it is looking pretty nice. You can see there's some, there is some scarring here. It may have gone through some of the decline, uh, but it, it currently doesn't have that. It's looking nice and robust, and it's good to, good to see. Yeah, this is a, this is a beautiful. I would say this is probably one of the most beautiful specimens of any Florida native that I've seen in a long time. So let's get a picture of the crown. You don't want to look at the boots of the of the crown shaft there, but uh, it is it is is a faster growing, more robust version of Sargentii and it's kind of, un we're kind of still unsure of what it, how it exactly got this way, how it became like the, by far the prettiest version of, of these, uh, of Sargentii, because there's a bunch of subspecies, there's subspecies Sawanai, which comes from Sawana Island, off the coast of the Dominican Republic, I believe, there's uh, Navisana, which comes from Navisi Island, which is between the Haiti and Cuba, and then there's regular Sargentii, um, which comes from uh, the Florida Keys, or at least it was considered to be native there, and parts of uh, Cuba, and uh, I believe Cuba, and Hispaniola. So that's more of the daintier, smaller trunk variety. So we can kind of keep on going towards the crown, but you guys probably want to see, I mean, sorry, going towards the, the base, but you guys probably want to see the crown. So, uh, so yeah, the, the seeds look pretty much the same as regular Sargentii, and uh, the flowers look the same. You know, there's some more robust uh, pedunculate bracts there, uh, and fla and the flowers are just, they're just larger. Uh, <clears throat> but otherwise, it has every other characteristic of a Sargentii. It has a stiff, you know, bipinnate leaflets here. You can see, if I twist the camera like that, you can see it grows in two planes. You have this kind of uh, flat plane and one that kind of comes upward a little bit. And you can see it from a different angle right there. And... Uh, the, I, I've been trying to get seeds of this palm, and they are some around, but uh, just, they sometimes just don't, their flowers will go necrotic and they don't produce a good uh, crop, and then sometimes they will produce pretty much as many seeds as you want, so it's kind of hard to say. I mean, this one seems to be, that these guys here trim these racks, so they don't let them go because they do attract a bunch of animals at the, it's called the sergeant's cherry palm and they do produce one out of it so it is a sweet fruit and it attracts a lot of small animals so if we go over here to the this one's in a little bit more sun i can kind of get to it. it's a little bit smaller but you know this one shows a little bit more regular sargentia oh they do fertilize it okay that's what that is i thought that was just random sand but you know they do put fertilizer on here i don't think there's a sprinkler but like i said there, there probably is ample rain for this uh you know it's growing almost in its habitat it's only a couple hundred miles away so uh you know these are all let's go to this last one here i think there's an emerging rat but the reason this one died here is probably due to that virus um i can't tell you that it did because i couldn't see it unfortunately they planted some you know they were hiding some of the best parts of that palm 
uh, in these uh, these these bushes, and I can't really say whether it died of the rot or it just died of, of normal like uh, base rot. Uh, I could have gotten over water to the bushes. It could have gotten into the crown. They could have just been watering improperly. So, and you can see the nice silver color on these uh, when they do. You know, their boots are all kind of all pulled away. And there's there is still a little bit of black color on here. It, this may still have a little bit of that going on, and that may be some evidence that the other palm was actually infected. But usually, when they're really bad, it's like it's completely black. So, yes, I am risking my life for this video. So we can see how fat it is. Uh, that's probably that's o probably over a foot there in in, in uh, the crown shaft diameter, and the I thought that was an emerging brack that kind of has a little bit of a tip to it, but it's not. I mean, they usually will. I forget their flowering schedule, but uh, I believe they start flowering in the fall and put produce fruit in the spring. But it's hard to tell because these were being cut off. Um, off the top of my head, I, I just forget. It could be the midsummer that they actually produce the fruit. So. Um, Anyway, that's going to be about it for, uh, for Pseudophenix argentii subspecies, or variation, I should say, fat boy. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to head out of here before some of the neighbors start getting mad that I'm standing in their median. Um, if, you, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more palm vlogs, go ahead and subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification. I do go live around once a week, maybe twice. At least I try to. And if you guys have any questions about Fat Boy, and uh, we just call it Fat Boy. If you have any questions about Fat Boy, uh, just um, leave them down below and I can uh, get back to you guys as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.